Hi, a while ago I showed you how to make an app that uses triangulation to figure out the distance to a faraway object. And we used it to measure the distance to that island. Today I'm going to teach you the same thing, but we're going to use GPS instead. This method is more accurate than the one we saw last time, but it's also more demanding because now I have to go to that island. So um, let me restart the app, set the location for A, and now just give me a second. Okay, I'm at the island now and it's time to calculate the distance. I press the B button and look at that, 624 meters. We weren't far off with the other method. Okay, but let's go back now and start coding this other app. We begin by making a simple HTML page. Because this is intended to work on mobile, I'll add the viewport meta tag in the head section. This will make the app look properly on mobile devices. We'll also need to reference our CSS and JavaScript files here, like this. These files are empty for now. Now, inside the body, I'll add some elements like a div to show the user's current location and two buttons that we'll use to save the location at a given time. Then this info div will be used to show the distance between the A and B locations recorded by pressing the buttons. I'll also add a div to print some instructions here, like this. And looks like I forgot to add the label for the two buttons earlier. Now if we test, we see two buttons and this information. The location and info divs are also there, but they're empty for now. We'll populate these using JavaScript. The JavaScript code will start from this main function, which I call unload. What we do here is try to get access to the geolocation of the device. We test to see if the browser is capable of this feature and get a reference to the geolocation object like this. This is supported on all modern browsers nowadays, but you must host your website in a secure context. Now, if it worked, we'll soon add some code here, but if not, we need to inform the user. Here we'll call the watchPosition method, which expects a callback function on success, a callback on error, and some options here, where I'll set it to enable high accuracy and give it a maximum age of one second. We want to have as high accuracy as possible so that our measurement is good. Outside, this usually means the device will use GPS, but it's not guaranteed. Your device can get location from different sources, like GPS, cell towers, Wi-Fi. It can even be inferred from your IP, but not accurately. The device will choose one of these methods by itself. The way it works is kind of a mystery. If someone watching this works with phone operating systems, contact me or let us know in the comments. But setting high accuracy here means about 5 meter error outdoors, so great. I sidetracked for a bit. Let's get back to coding. I'll implement the onLocationUpdate function next and just log here the information associated with this event. And in the onError function I report the reason. Like maybe the user has location disabled or something like that. Now, if I refresh, it will ask me if I allow to use location. You just can't see this window because my screen recorder doesn't show it for some reason. After I allow and go to the console, we see some logs here coming from the onLocationUpdate function. This works even though I'm on a laptop because location is inferred from the IP. But you can see a 26 kilometer error here. Now, I'm not going outside to test this. 
I'll use the developer tools instead. Going here to more tools and then to sensors, we can set the fake location. There are a few cities here, which you don't see because my screen recorder doesn't capture these dropdowns for some reason. But I can select Berlin, for example, and I can even modify these coordinates manually like this. And every time I do that, a new location update is triggered and logged here in the console. Every time the location changes, I will update the global variable to the new coordinates, and I'll update the location div to contain this information like this. Let me define the current location global variable here now, and after I refresh, it shows up like this. We don't really need this to be global just yet, but we will soon when implementing the buttons. Let's set the A and B locations to null at first, and implement two functions called setA and setB. They will be called when pressing on the A and B buttons. These functions just update A or B to the current location, and then update info, which is a function we define next. If A is not null, I'll change this button label to contain the new location, and I'll do the same for the B button if B is not null. If both of them are not null, it means we can compute a distance between A and B. For now, I'll set this equal to a question mark, because I just want to get the interface to work. And I'll print it inside the info div like this. Let's now pass the set A and set B functions to the buttons here, like this. Refresh and test. If I press now A, it will update to save and show this current location. I can now change my location to somewhere else, like London, press the B button, and now it shows that information as well. And here is where we want to show the distance between these two locations. I'll replace this with the output from a getDistance function, and now we need to study the problem a bit. We have two locations, each of them given by a latitude and a longitude. But that information is actually not enough if we want to measure a distance. We live in a 3D world after all, and only have two coordinates here. All the points on this line have the same latitude and longitude with respect to the Earth. So you could theoretically share the same location with an alien. But you are on the surface of the Earth, I suppose. And because of that, we need to know the Earth radius as well. And it's 6,371 kilometers on average. But I'll convert it into meters like this. Now, yes, this is an estimation. But if A and B are close, these lines are pretty much parallel. And adding, say, 10 kilometers to this radius won't make a difference. And 10 kilometers is where airplanes fly. It's bigger than Everest. Our atmosphere is just not very big if you compare to the size of the Earth. In this app, we'll support places that are not too far away from each other, and that are relatively at the same elevation. In these situations, our estimation will be really good, and <laughs> the GPS error will be larger than this, trust me. Sidetracking again. Anyway, back to the problem. If these points would be given in x, y, and z coordinates, relative maybe to the center of the Earth, this would be easy to solve. It's just the length of this diagonal here, which is the square root of the difference on x squared, plus the difference on y squared, plus the difference on z squared. This is called the Euclidean distance. So let's do some math to convert the latitude, longitude, and radius into x, y, and z. We can immediately obtain the y as the sine of the latitude times the radius. But in JavaScript, we need to make sure that we pass here the angle as radians. It's what the sine function expects. We convert into radians like this, but even better if we separate this into its own function we'll need to use it several times. Then we can get this small radius here as the cosine of the latitude times the Earth radius. 
Using now this small radius, we can get the x as the sine of the longitude times the small radius, and finally the z value as the cosine of the longitude times the small radius. You may want to pause the video here if I went too fast. It's just basic trigonometry, but four equations, so it can be a lot to take in. Ask in the comments if something is not clear, or watch my other video where I explain this in more depth. Okay, so now that we have points in x, y, and z, we just implement the Euclidean function I spoke about earlier, and that's it. Now we test. Set A to London, and B to Berlin, and we have an error. Because I wrote these with the capital L here. Fixing this, refresh, setting A to Berlin, B to London, and... Ta-da! about 930 kilometers. Now, you will get the same result if you use specialized online services as well. Here I'm using Bing Maps, and you can see I get about the same value. I definitely introduced some error here when clicking, so I'm just looking for a ballpark figure at this stage. I'm choosing Bing because I worked for them some time ago, so I'm biased, I guess. Now, if I zoom out and measure the distance from London to San Francisco, I get about 8,500 kilometers. And if I try to do the same thing with our app, we'll see that we underestimate. By a lot. That's because what we are calculating here is a straight line distance, as if we could make a hole through the Earth, but Bing Maps calculates the so-called Great Circle distance or distance as the crow flies. We can get that too, like this, if we want. But the Euclidean distance we had previously is pretty much the same if A and B are close enough. Like, it didn't even make a big difference between London and Berlin, so it won't make a difference between me and that island over there. Earth curvature just doesn't affect much in this case. If you do want to understand this formula, watch that video I pointed out earlier. It's not rocket science, but I don't want to spend time for it here. Plus, we have more important things to do, like CSS. We'll need to make this app look nicer, otherwise nobody's gonna use it like this. I'll remove the margin and align the content to center, like this. I'll use display flex and align items and justify content to center. In this way, we align things both horizontally and vertically. I make the font size larger, and change the font to Arial. I think it looks better. Now, I want to first align things vertically. But then the buttons and the info should go horizontally here. So I'll use some divs and set some classes to them like this. In CSS, I defined the vertical container class to be flex with flex direction column, and the horizontal container is also set to flex, but I want flex direction to be row here. It's row by default, so I don't need to do anything. But I do want things to be aligned to center both horizontally and vertically, like this. Now, refreshing is a bit better, but still far from done. I'll make a style for the buttons next. I'll set the text to be bold and make it a blue color. I want a much larger font and make the buttons square, 100 by 100 pixels. I set the border to be blue as well. A bit better, but the cursor doesn't change to hand cursor when hovering. Not that big of a deal since this app is intended to be used on mobile, but I like to have it there anyway. Now, if we click on this, the font is too large now. I'll make the buttons bigger, but also define a new class with smaller font size when showing the location. Now, in update info, I'll add this class to the buttons here, like this, when they start to have location values. Refreshing now shows larger buttons, and when clicking on them, better. I remove some of the decimals here and show just five of them. It's more than enough. And do that as well in the your location part at the top. I'll add the CSS class here as well for consistency. 
let's refresh and much better now. But when showing numbers like this, I like to use a constant width font so things align better. I'll put courier here and align things to left. I think having four values here is also enough and layout will be better like that. But up to you really. I'll now move this info div in between the two buttons and modify the output here a bit so that it's more obvious that the distance is between these two points. Maybe a bit more dashes here and let's make this part blue to be more in line with the buttons. I'll also make the instructions less emphasized. It now takes too much attention. And that's it.